In this video, we're going to look at the various processes we can use for measuring and marking out of metal. For this video, we're going to use some sheet metal and we're going to use a variety of marking out tools. We've got our steel rule for our various measurements. We've got our engineer's square for marking perpendicular and parallel lines. We've got our scriber that acts for marking the same way a pencil would. We've got our center punch for marking the location and center of holes. Outside calipers that would work in the same way as a marking gauge for scribing parallel lines. And we've got spring dividers for taking radial measurements and for marking the circumference and radius of various circles. Before we start any marking out processes, what we would do is apply engineers or marking blue to the surface of our sheet metal. This applies a blue coating to the material that allows our scribed marks to show up far more clearly. The engineer's blue is applied with a brush or a rag. The first thing we're going to look at is how we mark parallel lines on our piece of material. I'm going to start off with my steel rule, measuring from the end, and I'm going to put a small scriber mark in the corner. It's just lifted the coating of the mark in blue, and with that measurement I can take my outside calipers, position them so that the outside leg hooks onto the end, and put the tip onto the scribed mark. I can then use the flat surface of the bench to scribe the line forwards and back to give a clear silver mark all the way around. If I was transferring that mark all the way around, I can keep the same measurement, checking it against my steel rule to make sure it's at the right size and continue scribing there. Always easiest to do this against the flat surface of the bench because you can keep your calipers flat and use the pressure on top of the calipers to press down and make that mark. Depending on how much marking blue is on the surface of the material and depending on what direction you scribe, you'll get a clearer line. If I was to be drilling at these corners, what I could do is I could center punch these using my center punch and using a ball peen or nylon hammer, locate it in the centre and tap. And what that will do is provide a small dent in the corner that allows me to locate the drill. I can also use this to mark the radius of curves. If I take my spring dividers and I untighten them, if I wanted to mark a small radius around the edge of this corner, I can use the centre punch mark to put in the tip of my spring dividers and I can use that to scribe round. Now sometimes it's easier to rotate the metal, sometimes it can be easier to actually spin the spring dividers. You find what's most comfortable for you. And again because the mark in blue is in this corner, you can see it's taken off the layer of mark in blue and it allows me to see clearly where I might be removing the waste material. If I had, for example, to find the centre of this piece of material, there's two different ways I could do it. I could take my measurement from each side, in this case 72 with half of it being 36. I would mark a small point with my scriber and I would do the same along this piece here. The distance would be quite a long distance to try and travel with the outside calipers. So in this case, I would introduce the use of my engineer's square, working in the exact same way as a tri-square would. I could score the lines across and across. But the alternative method to find the centre would be simply to go from corner to corner, using my steel rule or another straight edge, and I can easily find the centre by scribing the diagonals. And again, if I was to be drilling the centre of this, or I wanted to use it as a simple little witness mark to indicate the centre, I would position my centre punch on there and tap with my centre punch. 